Hello and welcome to the third part in this series of videos about APA style. Today we will be talking about the third part that you must include in your papers or university reports, the introduction. So uh, this is uh, where we left at the end of the last video. So in order to continue you just have to click on the insert uh, tab in case you are not, are not there and then uh, click on page break so as you can see the header is uh, the one we wrote in the second page in the abstract so this is now present here and uh, that, that will apply for the rest of the document so uh, the introduction in contrast to the rest of the sections of the paper, uh, the method, uh, results, discussions, and so on, uh, the introduction does not have heading labeling. So you just have to start writing the body of it. What should you write here? Well, the introduction is the place where you tell people what is the point, what is the importance of the study, uh, of your paper and also uh, this is where you show what has been done in this area by other researchers this is also known as the theoretical background now you can actually write a second level heading entitled theoretical back background but it is not mandatory now before I continue with uh, the introduction I have just uh, mentioned a second level heading. Well, just let me deviate for a minute or two. APA has rules for the headings included in a paper. In total, there are five levels. So, uh, I will uh, create um, temporarily a document for you to see the different level, levels of headings. So the first uh, level, let's say method, must be centered, you must center it, must be bold face and uppercase and lower lowercase heading, also known as title case. So we just write method and okay, <laughs> let me just change this uh, quickly to Times New Roman 12. And okay, um, the second level heading is uh, must be flush left, bold face, and the same as method uh, uppercase and lowercase. So let's say theor theoretical background. The third uh, heading level must be indented here as, uh, as you remember in the abstract we indented the keyword uh, line so you just move this little arrow here uh, must be bold face but uh, must be lowercase paragraph heading ending with a period so lowercase paragraph heading is only the first letter is in uppercase so for example uh, here you can write materials uh, that you use in the method uh, the fourth uh, level of heading is uh, must be indented so that's already indented bold face we just have that italicized here and uh, just as uh, before lower case paragraph heading ending with a period sorry I just forgot this here so uh, in this case let's say uh, you use a special scale for the um, mathematics self-concept and achievement paper you use the Gebhardt uh, scale of um, uh, mathematics self-concept and math achievement 
Now you just have to include this if you actually have a lot of information or relevant, really, really relevant information about this uh, fic uh, fictitious scale or the, the actual scale that you are going to use. And finally, the fifth uh, level of heading is indented, uh, italicized, but not bold face. And as before, uh, let me add a point here, and as before, uh, lowercase paragraph heading. So, fifth level of heading. And I just made a mistake here. This scale should be lowercase. So those are the levels of heading that you um, how to uh, that uh, APA suggests uh, for you to use. Now the numbers, the number of levels that you use is directly dependent on the complexity of your paper. I have not seen many papers that use more than three levels, and I haven't seen seen any paper that uses five levels, but that's just me. I'm sure there should be a lot of papers that use all the range uh, available. Back on the main topic, the introduction. Um, the formatting is pretty straightforward. Uh, you must indent every first line of a paragraph. So, um, as uh, I said before, we already indented this line of the keywords by moving this arrow here. So this means that now all the document is going to have that. But um, if you move this little arrow back to its original position here, you see that it doesn't change uh, the things before. So uh, just changes from now. So let's move it back here and um, now every time you start a new paragraph, paragraph you will have it indented. So this is uh, this saves uh, a lot of time. So uh, just make sure that the indentation is one centimeter. And um, uh, as I say, this is as I said, this is not a tutorial on scientific writing, but uh, I would like to give you a piece of advice when you are writing the introduction, and this is my approach. Um, do not start the introduction with a quotation, a direct quotation. You might start perhaps with a reference, but not with a quotation. Perhaps for an uh, essay at school it's fine, but at the academic level I don't think that's a good idea, simply because some people might think straight away that you are unable to present your own ideas. And remember, as I said before, this is the place where you tell people why your research is important, your research. So what uh, do I mean by a, um, a direct uh, quotation? And uh, this is something that I'm going to explain in greater detail in the references and uh, also in the second part of the introduction in the in the next video uh, about um, uh, quotations and citing in uh, APA style. So, for example, you when you make a direct quotation, you use quotation marks and say, for example. Um, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. You close the quotation marks in at the reference Newton uh, page, I don't know, 76 or something. Yeah. In case you want to say that uh, there is uh, a reaction for the level of math self-efficacy or something, I don't know. I don't recommend to start like that. So, the introduction is also the place for you to state your hypothesis. Professor Andy Field, the author of the book Discovering Statistics with SPSS, he has one short guide um, where he says that the hypothesis should be informally stated. In the introduction 
in uh, stresses that whoever writes something like my hypothesis or my experimental hypothesis is that and so on and so forth he said that whoever writes uh, write this will be fed to a large swimming pool of hungry piranha fish i agree with the first part although some papers actually write the hypothesis and give them a number so they say uh, we want to tackle the research question uh, X or Y in uh, our hypothesis hypothesis are uh, hypothesis one uh, and they say something hypothesis two and so on however this is related with the results section where they tackle the hypothesis one by one now as I did with the abstract, I'm just going to type in the code for a random text so you can see how the introduction from a visual point of view should look like. Uh, and after I uh, do this in the next video, although uh, it's not men mentioning the list you, you, you saw at the beginning of the video, I'm going to talk about in-text references since the introduction contains your theoretical background, this is the place where you will uh, write most of your references. So think of uh, the next video as a second part of this introduction section. So uh, I'm going to get rid of this and type uh, quickly a, a code for random text. So as you can see, um, the start of every paragraph uh, begins indented that's how it should look like when you're writing your introduction and and you should be able to state all these things in in few pages uh, do not take uh, it no more than uh, three or four maximum but uh, is is up to uh, it's up to you somehow and if you're writing a university report you should ask your teacher or your supervisor clarification about how many pages you should write uh, for this so i hope you have enjoyed the video and uh, i'll see you in the next one bye